Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE dishwasher, solenoid, armature, and linkage. It's going to be a very easy repair, and it'll only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at ApplianceFartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new solenoid armature and linkage. The solenoid armature and linkage shifts the dishwasher between wash and drain. The manager should be changing it out if it's damaged and the dishwasher is draining all the time or not draining at all. In order to change the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinets. So we're going to go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down. And then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected, we can open up the dishwasher door and pull out the lower rack. To get the rack out, all you have to do is pull it all the way out and set it aside. Now that we have the lower rack out, we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to use the door and carefully pull the dishwasher out from the cabinets. Once you have it out a little bit, you can grab the frame and pull it out the rest of the way. Now that we have the dishwasher out of the cabinets, we're going to put a towel down to catch any water that may come out and protect the floor when we turn the dishwasher over. Once you have it down, you can carefully lay the dishwasher on its side. Now that we have the dishwasher on its side, we have access to the part. It's mounted right here and goes into the solenoid. We're going to put a towel down over the motor so when we take off the E-clip and the spring, we don't drop it inside. Now that we have the towel down, you can disconnect the spring. All we have to do is unhook it from the solenoid and let it go. Once you have the spring off, you can reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and take the E-clip off. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Once you have the E-clip off, we can reach in and pull the cam and the spring off. All you have to do is pull it off the shaft. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. And then we can pull the solenoid armature and linkage out. All you have to do is pull it out of the solenoid and off the dishwasher. Here's the old solenoid armature and linkage next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at ApplianceFartsPros.com. To put the new solenoid armature and linkage in, all we're going to do is push it down into the solenoid. Then we're going to hold it in position while we put the cam on the shaft. Once you have everything lined up, you can slide the cam all the way down the shaft. And then we can use the small flathead screwdriver to help put the E-clip on. When you put the E-clip on, you want to make sure you come from the back side so the open part of the E-clip is opposite of this pin, otherwise you won't be able to slide it on. Once you have the E-clip on, we can stretch out the spring and hook it back onto the solenoid bracket. Once you have the spring hooked up, we can pull the towel out and then we can put the dishwasher back up on its feet. 
Once you have it back up on its feet, we can pick up the towel. Now we have to reach underneath and put the line through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have all the lines connected, we can open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws and hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have the screws in, we can put the lower dish rack back in. All you have to do is line it up and push it back into the dishwasher. Once you have it in, we can close the dishwasher door. Then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.